Today, we're talking about buying property the way that Wall Street buys property. There are a lot of tech uh, solutions. There are a lot of tools that you can use, resources at your fingertips to make this possible. But let's understand how exactly it is that Wall Street buys property, because they're not buying just your one-off properties. They're buying hundreds at a time in a portfolio. Right, Greg? Uh, they do it all the above. They buy in a portfolio. They they buy them one at a time. And yeah, okay. Uh, the yeah, the approach they take they're building massive portfolios but they you know these are companies that back in 2012 right around there sometimes a little earlier when they first emerged uh, it had never been done nobody had ever owned a ton of rental homes around the country and uh, while people thought it was a good idea they thought the management was going to be impossible like how do you deal with 5,000 15,000 25,000 houses scattered across 20 different cities it was um, it was said to be impossible because it had never been done. Now, for some of us that were early players in the industry creating solutions for Wall Street, we heard it can't be done, and we said, "Well, you've got a supercomputer in your pocket. We've got, you know, <laughs> we've got drones flying overhead. We were had a man on the moon 40 years ago. I think saying it's impossible to cut 5,000 lawns is maybe a stretch, and so we <laughs> endeavored right. to try to use the current technology and professional management systems that we borrow from other industries and apply them here." And now it's uh, it's seven or eight years later. And what those big players have done, they, they, they proved, first of all, they can all do it. Um, meaning virtually everybody who tried to build a big national portfolio of properties and manage them effectively, virtually everyone who tried succeeded. And so it wasn't impossible. On the contrary, it was actually just a pain in the neck, a big colossal pain in the neck operationally, but they figured it out. Um, and the people that invested in them some of them are public companies now. Some of them issued bonds against this. They're now seeing the performance of these portfolios of rental homes, and they're seeing something that everyday investors have known forever, which is you rent them out, they make money, they get more valuable every year. The difference is Wall Street knows how much to raise the rent every month, every year. They know how much money they're making in a yield, which is the profit you make on your rent. They know how much appreciation they get. They know what the ROI is, and that's one of the things that the small investor has really never known. You know, people that I know that own property, invest in property, they know they make three thousand dollars a month. They know they, you know, they don't. No one's ever boiled it down for them into numbers that can be compared to other investment vehicles. So while the stock market, I can see how the stock market is done. I can see how my savings account is done. I can see how other investments have done. I really can't see in any transparent way how my real estate portfolio was done. And that's one of the things that's changed is that companies like us and a company called Roofstock have built the same technologies that were used, the same calculations that are used by big Wall Street firms are now baked into um, our user experience on our websites and allow people to start to understand, okay, well, now what is yield and how is it calculated and what is a good yield, what's a bad yield? What are the trade-offs, the more expensive the property? The more in demand it might be, but the lower the yield is going to be, lower yield, I may have more turnover. There's all these different trade-offs that balance into it, but we're, we're giving everyday investors, entrepreneurial investors, the tools that were built for the big players um, because those tools enable them to do it on a very, very big, unprecedented scale, and they all apply to the small investor as well. So I'm listening to this. I'm not wall street capital i'm just a guy or a gal that wants to buy two or three properties how do i utilize ownamerica.com how do i utilize some of these uh, tech platforms that are out there to my advantage yep and i'll tell you about own america because i know the most about ours and uh, i don't usually do any kind of a shameless plug and this won't be one either but you've if if people listen to this segment we we analyze markets a lot here one of our favorite things is picking winners right that's right and so wall street picks winners wall street doesn't say i'm going to buy in phoenix because i live in phoenix they say where's the population moving okay where are the prices low enough and the rents high enough for me to generate a return on my investment that is consistent with what expectations i've set for my sources of capital so when they raise money the money they raise wants to get five and three quarters percent yield, and so they have to go and get six percent yield so they can make a profit and then pass the rest of it on, right? Mm -hmm. So um, starting with the market selection. So long-term price appreciation, how has the market performed over the last 20 years through all these ups and downs of the real estate market? How has it performed? How does that compare to the rest of the country? 
How does it compare to other markets you might be thinking about going to? Keep in mind that Wall Street didn't have to go where they lived or worked. They were going to go where the money was. And so they approached this where every square mile of the U.S. is potential investment territory. Let's go and try to figure out where the best opportunities are. So once you see how it's performed, we then reveal the population growth. Okay, population has been growing in virtually every market in the country, but how steeply, how fast, all right? Once you see that it's steep or not, the question is, well, why? All right, and that always ties to three things. Jobs, so if jobs are moving in, what jobs are moving in, where are they coming from and why? That usually ties to cost of living or cost of operating if you're a business, mm -hmm. right? So you see companies move from high tax states to no, no tax states. Companies that move from high regulation states to low regulation states, but then you also have quality of life, okay? And that, that relates to climate, that relates to the employees being happy to go there, being able to recruit um, people from the base within the city itself, like Charlotte or Atlanta or Dallas have a great base to recruit from, but also you can recruit to those cities from Chicago and New York and LA because the quality of life, cost of living combination is solid. So it begins for Wall Street and it should begin for Main Street with this idea of, let me try to figure out the people trends. Where are they going? Why are they going? Are they staying? Are the reasons they're going and staying sustainable? And if so, now I've got a market that I've got some uh, confidence in. And then they dig in with the data. Then it's what are the properties worth? What are the going rents? What are the expenses to operate in that market? And what kind of a yield can I get? And of course, yield is my rent, what I'm collecting, minus what I'm paying in taxes, insurance, property management, and maintenance. Whatever I have left is my basically my net operating income. And if I divide that amount of money by what I paid for the property, I have my yield. So if I get six grand in net operating income at the end of the year on a $100,000 investment I made, I got a 6% yield. All right. And so that's the first piece. The second piece is, is that property going to get more valuable? Because mm -hmm. if that $100,000 property becomes worth 103, it goes up 3% next year. Now I've made $6,000 in yield plus $3,000 in price appreciation. I can't pay the bills with the price appreciation like I can with the yield, right? I can't, that's not cash in my bank account, but it's equity in the property. But the combination of those two things tends to add up to about a nine, between an eight and a 10% combo between yield and price appreciation and big Wall Street firms and now all these tech companies like us and Roofstock um, and others that are coming um, are creating that kind of transparency that you can look across the whole country and say, where is the liftoff? Where are the places where there's gonna be a good buy? And now what should I buy in those markets in a micro market kind of place or kind of way? Um, and what kind of return should I expect? And then to measure the return as I get it to see that I do better than I expected, worse or hit it dead on. So we have about another minute before we have to end the show. If I'm a, I'm, I, let's say I'm browsing on America.com, I'm browsing Roofstock.com, what should I be looking at in terms of numbers? Because I'm sure I'm going to be thrown a lot of data at me, right? I'm going to see ROI, I'm going to see internal rate of return, I'm going to see the rental amount, the uh, home appreciation in the market over the last couple of years. What are the most important data points that I need to, that I need to synthesize to make the best decision for me? Okay, sure. Very simple. First one is yield or cap rate. Those two terms are pretty much interchangeable. Yeah. That's that equation I just went through. How much profit do I make? The appreciation comes over time and you can't spend the money, which is actually good. But the key about yield is if I have cash flow, if I'm making five or 6%, which is actually a perfectly good yield, doing better than that, you're probably taking too much risk. Doing less than that, you're probably paying too high a price. But if you can do 5% on your money by buying real estate, that means that you have what we refer to as staying power, right? If the That's market right. turns, you just wait out the recovery of the market. I don't think it's going to turn, but if it does, just hang on for 10 years and your property values will be back and then some. Right. Don't sell just because there may be chaos. And if there is chaos, just hang on, right? Like, just don't sell your stuff. This is a bad move. Greg, thanks so much. Appreciate the time. Thank you. 